Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Voilà donc. Good afternoon. So, we have this huge responsibility difference to try and have people back and uh, fight against uh, the tough uh, issue of digestion, especially uh, towards the end of the week. So, we are going to uh, have this next theme, uh, decentralization and empowerment. empowerment. This is uh, quite an issue in France with uh, this decentralization process. So we have a new layer in the delegation of power. Just a few words of introduction before we move on to the round table. This principle is that the state delegates its power to another operator on the territory. So decentralization is not about a new power coming from nowhere uh, to exercise some power in the territory. So this is a regalian function. It's a principle of sharing with operators which are closer to the field. So it is the notion of subsidiarity of the state. So this is to clarify the context. In matter of decentralization, you don't have to go very far away. 20 kilometers away is an altogether different world. And James, I would like you to explain to our public today how in a very similar country to ours, apart from our different history, Italy is not a Jacobin state, it is a federal state. However, people are the same, patients travel freely on the European territory. And uh, yet in uh, Italy, the situation is highly decentralized and local actors bear a heavy responsibility. So questions are a bit different in that country. Yes, hello. I represent the group San Donato. I would like to explain about this group and about the Italian system and the Lombard system in the region of Lombardia. First of all, 60 years ago, when San Donato was founded, it was founded on the basis of a partnership. You mentioned subsidiarity. So it was a public-private partnership and the foundation was that a public as well as a private hospital had to abide by the same rules. So they have the same legal framework, the same level of um, patient uh, indemnization, and they had to have the same advantages and same possibilities in terms of procedures and in terms of number of beds available. So we have spaces opened for the population covered by the Italian social sec security scheme. So with a total of almost 5 million patients per year, we, our patient basis is 90 uh, Five percent uh, public. We are fully aware that most of our patients are come uh, are uh, handled by the public system. Some patients come from outside the region of Lombardia and there is a, a disparity of uh, care on the territory. We could go and operate elsewhere in Italy but in some regions the state's presence is not strong enough to guarantee the uh, security and the sustainability for the group. 
So for the various actors, who does what? What's the role of the central actor? What, what, what's the role of local authorities? We have an equivalent, although somewhat simpler. We have the equivalent of the French R ARS, Regional Health Authorities. We call them DRG in Italy. They are established and uh, followed up by the region. The region uh, sees uh, or controls uh, the uh, indexes and the group as a private actor has some requirements and internal regulations and some internal objectives which are higher than those determined by the state. This legal framework is equitable between uh, private operators and public operators. And we have a stronger financial capacity as well as entrepreneurs' capacity. We can adapt our offer depending on the local needs. So prices are the same. They are determined by the authority. So this is comparable to what we have in France. Yes, and prices are applied across the board. There are no, no major differences between public prices and private prices. And the medical teams are the same. We have two different plannings, one for the public, one for the private, and it is illegal to change this. So this, it is like this by law, but we have the possibility to let medical teams have their hands on what they do. We monitor how they comply with their objectives, but we trust them. So we have a three-level dialogue, administrative, medical, and uh, in terms of property. So the teams and doctors can work, the, s the same teams work for the public sector and for the private sector. That's right. That's right, the same teams work in both frameworks and you can develop as many offers as you wish yes for the private that's true for the public it's different we have a, a system of waiting lists it does not depend upon us but we have the possibility to to guide the population uh, towards the various services. Prices are not significantly different. What really changes is uh, the waiting lists. But being a French uh, and uh, being a patient in France as well, I realized that it's not that much that different. In terms of research, you have three university hospitals, yes, San Rafael, San Donato, and Galeaz. So you train health professionals. Yes, this is the core of our business. We benefit from international cooperation, and we have assisted states to develop their uh, health offers, uh, including uh, with associations such as the Chain of Hope. And we have some teams who train local teams. We don't want to have people under our authority. We want to empower them. Does it bring results? Yes, it does. And it uh, fosters trust between private partners and the state.
which needs long-term partners. It's not about having American companies coming, uh, opening a McDonald's and moving away. What are the limits? Are there limits or risks, perhaps? Yes, I can mention three limits or risk. First of all, in terms of research, we are the first research center in the country after the National Research Center, and we are the first private research center. Italy, according to the latest Bloomberg figures, which have been produced for the World Health Organization, Italy lacks uh, confidence and return on investment. Uh, we, we are second, uh, but we have uh, good results as second worldwide, followed by Spain. But st what statistics don't show is that our territory is uh, uh, covers a, a huge range of. Uh, differences and specificities. Results are not homogeneous. For those who knew Mr. Paolo Rodelli, who should have been here today, but he had to go to the United Nations, so he couldn't attend today. And he could tell you that when you have a presence at all level of the pyramid, Uh, property plays an important uh, part, and this is uh, an important condition. You've got to steer things, but you've got to be transparent as well, especially in a country uh, which uh, had uh, experienced corruption. Private actors tend to be looked upon as suspicious. So it's a nice way to react in, in a situation of crisis. Yes, and we have a, a strong um, financial power because we have to be able to anticipate on the needs of the population. You're in, you're out. Thank you, James. This is a little bit far away from our reality. I'd like to come back to our daily business. As uh, we always say who is interested in, in knowing more of our group. We, we will really be more than happy to um, answer any questions. Let's uh, come back to France now and to that subject of decentralization. Cédric, you have a long experience in the French hospital sector. Now. What is the situation at present? What are the strengths and weaknesses? What should we expect, uh, given the constraints that we have? I'm really struck by what was said to us just now. Beyond the specific organization in our countries and beyond the responses that we bring, I can see a permanent questioning do your present organization give the necessary place to health in our lives and economic models? Secondly, do your organizations allow enough freedom? Is it possible for the coming years to imagine some organizations which could answer the needs of the people, knowing that there are many questions around the trust that people put in health systems. French people start to doubt about their health system, and they now think that it will, that they will, well, they will be worse off in the future. So these are huge challenges. And how can you cope with this? And how can you bring people together in favor of health?
it seems very interesting to me. Uh, th there are three elements that are very striking for me. First of all, proximity. People request proximity. They need to feel closer to their health organizations. And they need to know how health care will be provided to them. The underlying issues are those of organization. Now, the system is more difficult to decipher for people, including ourselves as health professionals. The second issue is that of social cohesion. Health plays a significant role and will do even more so in the future. Uh, socially, health is significant. How will it help the country to solve its socio-economic problems and how will it enable our country to uh, keep developing in the future? Guy Valencien talked about countries in the planet who are massively investing in health. So I have that question of cohesion. Third question, that of investment. Health is a high budget, 200 billion euro per year, but, it, but it's the future. I have many contacts with the industrial circles and they want to be part of a solution, a collective solution. This being said, Uh, territories now can be part of the solution. And why is that? Well, because when you live on a territory, you can have some political weight, you can bring people together, you can create some links and open up the various systems. The question of health in our regions and territories is a preoccupying one. We know how central it is. We keep talking about this. I ask two questions. Does health need territories? And second question, do territories need health? Well, health need territories, that's obvious. A health system can be beneficial only if it is supported by a number of policies it's not just about offering care, it's about offering services and well-being, sports, infrastructures, education, innovation, industries. All this interacts with health and these local policies are led by the regions of our country. Secondly, does a territory needs health of course yes health is one of the highest preoccupation a uh, source of argument sometimes people ask themselves how they will benefit from a health system in the future if we've answered these questions in the future we'll have to imagine the role of different admin areas and the people in charge of those areas so the question for me is well it mustn't be an institutional solution. We love to split things up in France. We love to play roles. But I think we need to think out of the box. We, it's not about decentralizing or centralizing. Or, or that, that's just a tool. I think, above all, what's important is how do we get uh, more buy-in from authorities, from industrialists, representatives of patients? How do we recreate a collective project I think we can also, or we should, uh, bring administrative areas together. When you look at the examples of projects, and we've just had one that's been cited, but there are other projects, there are many examples, each with its own uh, specific characteristics. Well, the area acts as a federating element and is part of the solution. I, can't, I don't think we should limit ourselves to what we have today, the doubt, the, 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 the fear that, you know, we need to have a collective mobilization. 
We need tools. How do we use them together better? I believe in the principle of subsidiarity as well. There are some things that can be done better in the areas. But I fundamentally believe, uh, I was brought up by the Republic, I believe in the state. Uh, this is what we heard in the last round table this morning. You know, technologies play a very important role when it comes to policies. So uh, this is true in local areas as well. Yeah. But we need to dispel this doubt. We need to learn to be trusting and empower uh, people, make people accountable. And then up until now, uh, there were, have been experiments made. And, and often what happens is that elected officials are given the worst role. Um, then uh, um, They're there, they listen to experts. Well. They're supposed to make decisions based on what experts say. So even if this is not the only subject of uh, mayor, you represent civil society, uh, and therefore you are present on uh, supervisory councils. Uh, uh, you're in charge of many professionals in the area. How do you see this debate, this debate about decentralization and the right level for integrating decision-making policies from your point of view? Well, first of all, I'm the mayor of a city of 35,000 inhabitants, St. Raphael. It, the population triples in the summer. We're looking at 220,000 in the conurbation, and that triples also in the summer season. So we have two types of population that we have to uh, manage, 300,000 people outside of the winter period. We're a dynamic city, but 50% of the population is over the age of 60, and 10 to 15% of the population is uh, are, are 80 years old. So this means there's a real challenge from a medical point of view, a healthcare point of view. The first concern of, of uh, French people is their health. Now, my uh, administrative administrative population asked me about health care. Now, I'm the president of the supervisory council in the area, and I have to say that when you say that uh, our that elected officials, uh, you know, are there to to explain what experts say, it's, it's, it's the reality of the situation. This is what I have experienced. I'm a president uh, of a supervisory board. If there's a change in a hospital director, I am consulted. I have to go uh, and spend an afternoon hearing uh, to hear different candidates. So, you know, you're going to have a great afternoon listening to the different uh, applicants, but perhaps your opinion is, is not going to be listened to. And then you might say, OK, I'll be part of the, the CGHT. Now, you might have a university hospital in, in the county. So as part of the GHT, we haven't had any, uh, we haven't been convened. Uh, the, now people go on holiday. And so things are sometimes postponed. But we have a shared medical project, and when we looked into that medical project, because it was something I was interested in, I wanted to be involved. I'm not a healthcare professional, and as an elected official, we've, we've got to make more effort to try and understand and listen to people and to consult people and, and try and understand the challenges. So in the Varest, there are three university hospitals. So one of them is going to see the closing of its maternity ward in Saint-Tropez. If you go on holiday, this is a subject of concern, therefore, especially for mothers in the area. They're thinking it will take them over two hours to get to the nearest maternity ward, and they're told that maybe helicopters will be made available. Maybe that's not the best solution from an economic point of view. So you think, well, maybe that's not uh, the, the best thing to do. And, and, you know, our citizens ask us to adopt the right approach based on common sense. Then in the hospital in Draguignan, they're closing or they're thinking of closing the intensive care unit. Uh, so if that closes, it means there will be a lot of surgical activity that will not be possible in that part of the area. 
So it's a very elderly population, as I've said, and we don't have a neurologist in the hospital. We can't find a neurologist for very good reasons. Um, well, we're, there's a, there is a part-time neurologist. Now, of course, stroke is uh, one of the first uh, causes of mortality in an elderly population, so we need to be able to manage that kind of thing. As a, an electoral official, I also have to be involved in, uh, you know, how we support elderly people or isolated uh, people or people uh, who have just uh, been through um, surgery, outpatient surgery. So I have to be able to provide an explanation. Uh, and, and of course, there are a lot of disputes. The first uh, level is uh, the population. The po it's the population that we're in contact with. Now, we don't want to manage or intervene directly in the management of the healthcare system. It's not our role. No mayor will say, I want more responsibility in the way the hospital is managed. However, when it comes to taking into account needs such as they are expressed with um, a real listening ear, with a real type of consultation, and, and you know, the idea of being listened to, uh, you know, this is this is something that's important. Thank you, Mayor. So now we can uh, talk to Katia Julien, um, who is uh, the director of the DGOS. So we're all around this table. We're facing the same difficulties. We need to find a solution. We need to look at what the demand is, what the potential is, what the challenges are, what the constraints are. It's not about making constitutional reform when you're in charge of the DGOS. You know, the idea is to find the means, to find the paths. Uh, how do you see things? How do you uh, think that the department will uh, adopt a, a stance? Well, let me go back to what was said. We have citizens who have aspirations. They want the right level of requirements, uh, require the right, right level of requirements, uh, access to health care, but proximity as well, proximity of health care, proximity of the organization and participation in that organization. We've uh, heard from an elected official, but when you look at the organization of our republic, there are three uh, different regional authorities, each of which has authority and has expertise impacting the healthcare system. Cedric talked about sport, uh, transport, uh, uh, the Department for Elderly People who are, who, are, who are disabled. Mayors, of course, have concerns and needs for their population. So basically, at the end of the day, with the same organization, we've got to find the right kind of meshing. And what I believe is that at the end of the day, we've got some new methods uh, from two points of view. First of all, we mustn't just bring together elected officials, professionals, and users to implement our policies. We must get them involved right from the design phase. This is something that we've started because uh, in the ministry, we've got a, a contact group with representatives from elected officials from three, these three types of authorities, and we talk with them. And this means that we're regaining trust. Uh, this is what we were talking about earlier on. It's important to have trust. It's important to explain what we do. And it's important to talk about what we're going to do and really take into account and listen to what the elected officials say, and this is very important, and we must continue to do it. We must extend this locally, but also nationally. And there's another subject, that of method. Very concretely, we are no longer at a time where we can say, okay, in Paris decides what everybody else does in France. We must have a text with a framework that allows professionals, patients, and elected officials to do what they think best according to their characteristics. It's a much more exacting approach. It means that um, we've got to be able to identify what professionals and elected officials are already doing, because there are many things that are created locally. We've got to take those over, spread them, and not spread them behind a text, a short text or a model, but provide examples. We've already done this with a number of systems that we are pursuing. It's a change of position of the state and the relation of the state with its partners. And I don't believe that, as you were saying, any one person has the solution. We need to find the solution together. This is more difficult. It's more exacting. Sometimes we don't agree, and that's normal. But we must agree to listen to each other, to build together, and to 
help each area to make progress and find the solutions adapted to each. It's easier to do than say, but I believe that the, the changes that we're seeing, the CPTS, for example, they have to be based on this model. On the other hand, we've got this debate, but it's essential to talk about the real subjects. We need to agree to the objectives and we need to look at things nationally and locally and align everything. Thank you, Katia. Thierry, we're going to stop talking about who is managing what and how everything is organized. It's a bit like an anthropologist, you know, we have always healed people before we've had any kind of administration. So we'll always continue to heal people, to care for people. So given all of this, what we've just heard, in a, in, in a center, in a group of centers, what do we want in terms of signals and tools? What do we need, in fact, uh, from a regulator if we want to develop all of this? If we want to develop a, a, a ward, for example, well, let me talk about Elsen very quickly. We're co-leaders of private hospitalization in France with 120 centers uh, spread across France. So our uh, philosophy is fairly similar. The idea is to uh, put our entrepreneurial culture and our expertise in management uh, to the use of medical projects, doctors' projects, and, and to help patients. In fact, um, by nature, applying what uh, companies do to health, it's part of our DNA. It's normal for us. And if you look at what companies do, uh, there's the manager managerial side of things. We've all, uh, I ha hopefully, experienced good managers and, and how lucky we are when we have a good manager. We've all experienced a bad manager and, and the hell that it is being managed by a bad manager. So it changes an awful lot of things in terms of life, for the teams, but also in terms of results for the whole system. So management seems to me to be one of the key points. And in management, there's a very de there's a determining factor, and that is empowerment or accountability. The, that might be referred to as the principle of subsidiarity. In, in other words, it means asking ourselves all the time about who should be taking the decisions, who is the competent authority, which organization is closest to the action. That's how it should work. And this is something that is right at the core of our activity. Now, management. You, you'll understand where I, what I'm getting at. Management, it's, it's a job. Being a manager is a job, as we've heard. But there are two conditions for it to work. Uh, you've got empowerment or uh, responsibility uh, making. Now, the first condition is that you've got to have a playing field and a framework that are clear hopefully stable if possible, and that allow the teams, allow the managers to say what they have to say. And the second condition is that you've got to provide the team, whatever its size, whether it's a whole center, whether it's a, a ward or whatever, you've got to provide the team with the means uh, to accomplish their mission. These are the two things. Now, uh, then the teams do their job, some are great, they do some extraordinary things. Others uh, find it a little bit more difficult, but this is life and this is how management works. But if we don't have those two conditions, it's not going to work. And when you look at things closely in the healthcare field, these two conditions do not come together. You don't find them together. And it's not that difficult, but then they're not together. And that's because we haven't brought them together. Now, when you look at the framework then today, there is overlapping of, res overlapping of responsibility everywhere in France. You've got overlapping of responsibilities between the national and local levels, overlapping of responsibilities between the local levels, the uh, healthcare agencies and the centers, healthcare centers. So in a group, um, in fact, I'm often asked by doctors in the group uh, about things and uh, my uh, I'm very tempted to give them solutions straight away. It's up to them to find those solutions and we're there to support. So this framework is very important. 
we haven't thought up the system uh, from one day to the next. There are overlappings all over the place, and then the rules change all the time as well. I haven't been in the sector for very long, but every morning I receive uh, some legal monitoring information. Uh, I look at statistics, and I've calculated that on average there are two application decrees published every day. How can you manage a system that changes to this extent? It's just not possible. Even if you want to, even with the best of willpower, you know, each decree is intelligently written. But it's the, the sum that is ridiculous, the sum of decrees. Could we not imagine, like with information systems, or could we not imagine some kind of batch system? You know, a series of decrees every so often, or maybe rules uh, of good discipline. If I add that, then I need to remove that. So, so there's um, uh, the right kind of uh, healthcare legal system and also so that people out there in the field can apply the rules. The second condition concerns uh, means and we haven't provided the means yet. Whether we're talking about private, private or public hospitals, you come to a point in the year where you think about the budget. What kind of projects do you want to work on with your teams? So you start to work on the budget, on the projects. And if you're a good manager, you empower your teams, you give them responsibility, you make them accountable. And then on the 1st of March, uh, of the, ne the next budget year, everything changes because the prices um, are reset. And uh, the, for the moment, they're reset at a very, in a very random manner. For several years, it was minus 1% or 2% a year. So it means it, it upsets all of your projects. It upsets the boat completely, you know. So you, you have to decide, well, we can't do that project anymore. We can't afford to do it anymore. And then if there's a change in trend as well, if there's been a change in trend over the past two years, you, it's good to know about this ahead of time. It might be good news. It might allow you to build projects with a little bit more visibility. So there's a fairly natural demand, I believe, when it's said this way. You know, ask centres, hospitals to give you visibility. You know, it doesn't cost much to think about the future, to think two or three years into the, pr the future. This is what the President of the Republic has done. Ministers have provided a framework with the healthcare law for 2022. The rest should follow on naturally, based on the visibility of hospitals, so that hospital people, hospital uh, managers can do their job properly. So, if we take the image of a spore, it, it's something that you can apply to rugby. In rugby, there's a playing field, obviously. There are rules that don't change with each match. And there are means that are known and consistent. You want, it's 15 players, it's not 12, it's not 18. And we can prepare for a good match. It's the same thing for healthcare. So in the end, it's fairly simple. It's just a question of decision making. It doesn't cost more. So what are we waiting for? And the news, and it's always New Zealand who wins in the end. Now, Cedric, can you tell us a bit more about the uh, public hospitals? To react to Thierry, what Thierry's just said, you share what he's been saying as a hospital director. He said that there are maybe two or three things uh, that we can do quite easily. Yes, what we observe in overall is that, yes, the desire for stability and visibility is, is strong. And there are many efforts that have been made. We always want more, but I think that's a good objective. And I think it's, it's right to set this course this is the course that's been set by the current public authorities. But in general, more generally, I think uh, that this requires placing hospital action in a wider dynamics. When we were working with Claude Evin, it seemed that uh, all the efforts were being made today to prevent people from working together. And it seemed that People were really building up these silos and opposing professionals. And people keep trying to adapt the organizations. And often that leads to more complexity. 
So I think probably we need to dare. And I don't think we're daring enough in our healthcare system. We don't dare take risks. We don't dare try out new solutions. The dynamics today of these territorial hospital groups and these uh, healthcare professional groups, it doesn't matter what tool you use, but these groups should be places where people dare to challenge a certain number of situations, where they dare to question what exists and clarify the organizations. And this can be prepared and it should be supported. And I think uh, the public authorities do have a responsibility that's very strong here to maybe let people set the right level of responsibility in the right place. And I think this will require uh, questioning a certain number of our organizations in their existing state. There's probably a solution that we should have when we look at these issues. There are three key words. Contractualization is one. We don't trust each other enough. We don't agree on the objectives upstream, whatever your position in the sector. There's also a notion of accountability, uh, responsibility. The system often sanctions people, but it doesn't empower them. And then we need to find trust, confidence to experiment. And that's, that's difficult to, to trust. And when you're facing the immense amount of problems that our healthcare system is facing, but this is probably what will allow us to succeed. This is what has worked elsewhere in other public policies. If you look at educational policies, when you've trusted by entrusting the educational policies and the infrastructure to the local regions, we see that when you trust people, there's usually an improvement of uh, the public service rendered. We see this in education today in France. There's an improvement of the infrastructure, and efforts have been made without necessarily weakening the other levels of responsibility and empowerment. So it is difficult, that's true. And, but what is essential is to ensure that our Organizations don't prevent us from acting, from creating, from innovating. Today, it seems that we have a hard time in, in, in coming out and getting out of our organizations. Seen from the other side of the Alps, from Italy, do you share this diagnosis, James? When we were preparing this uh, interview, you spontaneously told me that in France we had a real problem of mistrust, shared mistrust. Everybody, Nobody trusts anybody in terms of collaboration and the way the system works. Yes, I think uh, this mistrust, uh, I would say all the actors are mistrusting, uh, distrusting each other. Everyone is remaining within their silo and they don't want to trust others. People are suspicious of others. Mr. Mayor, the, the mayor just expressed uh, this very strongly. There was a politics that sort of drift towards a trend that could be referred to as a populist trend who uh, really challenge all of the operators and we tend to have the impression that there's an enemy across the table for the next reform and that, or we're going to disappear. So when you put a, a collaborative project on the table, a collective project, often you have more reluctance in France and so this generates a real cultural reluctance that's not conducive to discussions and cooperation. Well, I think what people want is to be listened to. They want to be listened to. And when you entrust them with a responsibility, they want to be able to exercise it fully. At the Supervisory Council, I'm, I'll tell you a bit about my uh, experience. It's useful to have an elected official around the table. First of all, we have audits that were submitted to us, and the auditor didn't even come to consult the elected officials around the table. So the choice that we had was to say you're for or you're against. And I s asked that when an audit would be s submitted to our supervisory council, that the auditor uh, beforehand could simply come and consult with the elected officials. We are reasonable people. We're not constantly uh, in, in a con contestation mode. We want to be associated. 
we want to we, we want to make sure that our citizens are their needs are taken into account this is one of the variables you might not agree with it but obviously we understand that we can have uh, conflicting interests but the mayor is looking at a hospital that represents jobs he doesn't want to see the hospital closed these are objectives that aren't necessarily totally in line with certain other imperatives in the healthcare policy. And we understand that healthcare policy is not necessarily uh, designed to maintain jobs. And we understand all of this. But if we are entrusted with functions and responsibilities, we have to be respected in, in the framework of these functions. There's nothing more unpleasant than to, than to hear about a problem that we know something about. For example, with the emergency wards, which is a very topical question, there's a emergency ward that's designed for 25,000 and we're receiving 40,000. So there's really literally not enough space. And this is experienced, uh, it's a problem that is experienced by the staff and by the patients, these working conditions. We were evoking this in the normal uh, context, context of relationships of confidence that we should have with the administration and its representatives. And the article in the newspaper is the last thing that you need to do. But nevertheless, I see that often it's the most effective thing because you've discussed the problem, you've put it on the table, you have no answer from the national authorities. And when you have an article in the newspaper that criticizes the fact that in, just like in many emergency wards, you have people, especially the elderly, who are brought in uh, for the last hours of their lives who die in the corridors in, in, in absolutely unspeakable conditions. And when you ask uh, if certain measures could be taken to protect their intimacy and better manage the patients, things that can be done, and you don't have any measures that are taken, well, your last resort is to go see the press and say, this is unacceptable. We're in France. We're in the 21st century. And people shouldn't be dying in these conditions. And it's only then that you then uh, have people call you who never called you before on the telephone. Uh, with respect to this problem. So it's in, we, we need to have a quality of dialogue, and that's how we will make progress. And it's not any more costly. And I think there should be more respect and more uh, confidence from all of the actors, and maybe a bit of method. Yes, to react to what was just said here. It's obvious that we need to cooperate more, obviously. However, cooperation can't just be decided. It can't just be by decree. It's through concrete relationships and shared objectives. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of uh, rhetoric. So cooperation is really something that has to happen in the field. And for us in the healthcare, the field is the territory. That's where the actions take place. So I think we have a real ambiguity because it's true at, on the national level, we need public announcements, we need messages, but cooperation is often just a whole series of small victories that will help people meet together and solve a problem together. It's not very sexy from a national standpoint in terms of communication. It's difficult to communicate about this, but that's how it will work. So I think you have to have this desire at the national level to encourage, give a framework and, and empowerment and resources, and then really give the actors the desire to work together. In the ecosystems where this cooperation is made possible natively, things get done. And often it exists at the unit scale, and this transformation sometimes is not possible. It's not always easy to recreate these conditions of trust elsewhere. From my viewpoint, I totally agree with my, what my two colleagues have just said. I think to come back to what you were saying earlier, we need a lot more legibility. The, health, the French healthcare system is totally illegible, whether it's from the regular, regulatory standpoint, standpoint, the procedures, it's incomprehensible. And the more inco incomprehensible, it then protects itself and justifies itself. And the patient, in the end, has no recourse. Or when he does, the system is protected and the system self-validates, whereas in private systems, if your system doesn't work, you're out. You've lost your patient. Game over. That's it. So if we do a system really with the patient, a patient-centric system, and we pilot this system, the only question we should ask is the question of efficiency. 
Either you're efficient or you're not. Well, I think everyone in the room recognizes this central theme. Just to react, react about the uh, emergency wards and the two levels you were referring to, when you look at the measures announced by the administration, some are national, but others are local. And who will be maneuvering this? Well, our regional health agencies, but also the hospitals, and not just the directors. It's obvious that the internal hospital organizations don't depend on the national level, and that's where things will be efficient. So we've separated the two, and we need to play at the two levels, and it's much more complicated. That's true, but at the same time, if we don't do it, I agree, we won't succeed. This leads me to a second comment as to how do we regulate the system when you look at the authorizations on the one hand and financing. We're, we're lacking uh, measurement as well. That's another lever. It's a new uh, project. It's not just uh, a decree or financing, even if we're changing them to give better legibility. But here we really have something to develop. We did it last year for quality indicators, but the indicators need to be developed for all of our care experience, whether it's in the hospital or in the private sector or in the medical social sector. And here we have a huge project ahead of it that concerns everyone. Measuring results will measure the quality of the treatment of the patients, and we need to measure this. We have a huge project here that we probably need to devote more resources to so that collectively we can build a system that allows us to guarantee that the quality of health care treatment exists for everyone and everywhere. And this retro control loop actually works. Excellent. Cédric? Yes, I just wanted to add a word. What Katya said, I think it's very important. And I think it's uh, an extremely important, essential voice for the different, uh, a way for the different actors to work on these new regulation tools. We can agree, I think, that we have a system that has been constructed, that is now over administrated and excessively regulated. That's the paradox of our system. We, we govern through standards and the regulation instruments. We don't really have that many regulation instruments. And that's a new project for us. But for me, the biggest challenge in the near future to carry out these changes, these constant uh, improvement and evolution that we're, we must uh, carry out uh, to meet all of the to integrate all of the new technologies, et cetera. But for me, the biggest challenge is to reintroduce politics in the system in the noble sense, because reintroducing politics in the noble sense means to be able to define a project in which we will uh, bring people together. Healthcare doesn't bring people together enough. It's actually dividing people today in France. And there's a lot of tension in the territories around the the notion of medical deserts and deficiencies and divisions between the different sectors, the hospital sector, the public and private sectors. It's, it's a world full of divisions. And I think if we re-inject some politics, this would, would help to be able to support a project that will bring us together, that will be able to build in France these industrial champions. We don't have enough industrial champions. We need to bring the industrialists back into our healthcare system so that they participate in these solutions. We also, a political project means to give people, give the patients confidence again, but also the professionals. We cannot accept that we have these young healthcare professionals today who are saying, we really wanted to work in the sector, but we're so disappointed we want to go elsewhere. But really supporting a political project would be to be ambitious and have a new outlook on the problems. And I think it does require a lot of energy, a lot of ambition a lot. But I think this is what could help us come together in the territories and in what we call uh, France. In terms of performance, you can collect data, analyze them, and then give corrective measures, which are sanctions, but also sharing the value. How, how do you, at what level, what is the level of sophistication of data collection, this control loop? What basis do you measure the volume of activity on? And what are your criteria, quality criteria, performance, and, and uh, criteria for the service rendered? Is that important in Italy? No, it's absolutely essential and fundamental. 
the first word that comes to my mind has become a reflex in terms of privacy and patient protection is uh, l'anonymity of data, which is an imperative. It's imperative to be able to enjoy and use the data, the quantity of data that will allow us to see certain research lines and the relevance of this research on the medical standpoint and the relevance of our treatment system. So it will allow us to do even more prevention as well. We often tend, when you talk about this mistrust, people often think that the private sector is going to make patients dependent, maybe because there have been some problems with the pharmaceutical uh, sector with some very uh, negative examples. But our choice is to accompany in the long term. This is the real contract that we have signed. But to accompany the reforms, but also anticipate them doing prevention, uh, nutrition prevention in every school at every level. This also will allow the social security system to save a lot of money. In terms of data, in terms of data concerning your management, well, the more data you have on your patients or your users, if you will, the more you can really see healthcare paths that are adapted in the future and that are appropriate versus the needs of the population. So you can pre prevent more to have to treat people less. Well, we're getting, we're coming to the end of the round table. Would anyone, before we turn the floor to Katya, would do any of you have concluding words on the topic of decentralization and empowerment? Well, we really need this visibility, this pluriannual visibility on the tariffs. That's one way to do a lot of things for the public and private hospitals. So this is a very strong expectation of industry. Well, the patient's interest is at the heart of the debate, and we don't want a system that is working for itself and reflecting for itself. That's essential, a governance that's effective so that what is put in place really works, truly works, and respects each one of the actors. I think this is a second point. And responsibility, because, of course, when you have this multiple uh, actors and the interventions between them are not very clearly divined, defined, each one uh, passes the buck. You have nobody who's really responsible. So we need more transparency also in this respect. Decentralization, deconcentration, contractualization. The essential is not really the tool. The essential thing is to be able to really go back to empowerment in the system at the different levels of proximity and also confidence and trust. And I think if you look at the future challenges, people need confidence. They need to really get the actors back on board in the territories and the solutions and the tools will arrive. But yes, if we solve the governance problems, I think we will be, we'll have more peace of mind in the future. Well, simply to follow upon my colleague's words, the private sector is completely ready to be res responsibilized, empowered, and I think it would be very positive and very interesting for France to open up some more space to entrepreneurship and to uh, let the private sector have a, have a go. Uh, well, Katya, after all these great recommendations, do you want to have a, a concluding word? Well, well, I'm delighted that we need to meet together more often, I think, and exchange more. In terms of method, I'm sure that the evolutions are going in the right direction, and we really need to continue whether it's in terms of working methods, governance, and working with each other. And in terms of regulation tools, the evolutions and the changes need to come, whether it's for financing or quality indicators. But I think they are going in the right direction. And we need to pursue all together and intensively. Thank you very much.